We talk a lot about tips and tricks that help develop your mechanics, which don't get me wrong, is great on its own, but what I think is equally if not more important once you've gotten the core mechanics down is game sense. Knowing what decisions to make in a split second is truly what separates the good from the great to the absolute goats. What's good everybody, it's your host Stan, and today we're going to be breaking down important decisions that pros had to make, and for this video specifically, I'm going to be using your help. Yeah, you guys in the audience, hi, how are you? I've been hearing that you guys have wanted some more VOD review type videos in the comments, so hopefully this is a cool and interactive spin on what you guys have been requesting. Also, I know that this is a different type of video than you guys are used to, so leaving a like will show us that you want more of this. So do it, like, right now. I'll wait. Perfect. But before we get into it, we have to ask you guys, why don't you show your love for ProGuides by actually visiting ProGuides.com? We noticed that a lot of you guys don't even visit our website, and you guys are really missing out because we've added all new analysis videos and trending articles, along with new courses coming with World Cup pros and much more. So click that link and check us out. The first scenario that we're going to be taking a look at is Buga's solo cash cup tear, where he absolutely obliterated the end game and made it look easy. We're going to stop at key points and discuss the main options Buga could have made and why the decision he did end up making allowed him to win the match. Let me give you the rundown. Buga is in the end game, of course, and the first moving zone is winding up. His back is somewhat against the zone and he is in the high position for the time being. Now stop. Alright guys, Buga has his first big decision to make. What do you think he should do? Option 1 is getting your tarp going. After all, he is on the high ground with a good mat count, maximum materials to be exact. Option 2 is utilizing the shockwaves in Buga's inventory to get himself ahead of the zone. What would you do? I'll give you a few seconds, so pause here if you need to think about it. Alright, let's take a look at what Buga decides to do. Yes, guys, Buga decides to use one of his shockwaves to shoot him to the front of zone. Let's break it down because there's really more to it. First, let's discuss why option 1 is wrong. Yes, theoretically, Buga could have attempted to tarp his way into zone, but this would be super ineffective. I know he has maximum mats when he had to make that decision, but remember, this is a solo game mode. You don't have a teammate or two that could hand over mats when you're out. When you're out, you're out. As a solo, you wouldn't be able to make a structurally sound tarp for all moving zones, and eventually, someone else would take height from you with ease. This is why option 2 is much, much more appealing. Take a look at Buga's inventory. He literally has 5 shockwaves. It's not like he only has one left and needs it for future rotations, where even in that scenario, I would still probably use the shockwave. But when you have that many shockwaves, just use them to save mats and secure placement points. On top of that, you can see that Buga decides not to build for a solid 5-10 to 10 seconds after a shockwave launched him because he knows how safe the front of zone is. Everyone else is rotating or looking behind them for picks, but nobody cares to look in front of themselves. Like for real, how smart do you have to be to instinctively not build in a game revolved around building? I'd be cranking my 90s the moment my feet touch the ground. Ah, I guess that's why I'm not Booga. A man can dream though. <laughs> Overall, Buga puts himself in such a safe spot by using only one shockwave, which makes this hands down the best strategy to have employed. Fast forwarding a bit, and Buga is now scaling the hill that zone is moving over. He's heavily exhausting the shockwaves in his inventory, but now he's met at yet another crossroad. This one is a pretty simple predicament, where option 1 is making a play for height, and option 2 is playing the middle tarp. What would you do if you were Buga here? Alrighty folks, let's roll the footage. Yeah, to those of you who picked option 1, you are correct. Buga does in fact decide to go for height. Now, let's talk about why going for height is the right move. First, he has no more shockwaves, and there's still a little more hill that he has to scale. Why would he middle tarp now, especially if he will have to go up eventually? I feel like not going for height here would be shooting yourself in the foot. It's not one of those situations where both options are valid, but one is better. This one is pretty cut and dry. In fact, if you really paid attention, you would know that A, height is not being held by anyone at the moment, and B, there's only 8 people alive right now. With both of these factors combined, there really isn't a better time to secure high ground and lock up the dub. And as all you guys can clearly see, Buga does in fact secure height and can practically taste the epic victory royale. The final clip that we have from Buga is the good old fashioned 1v1 to secure the win. Mono e mono. This is what it all comes down to. But no! Booga is way up in the sky and needs to find a safe way to get down. I'm not giving you options this time. What would you do to get down and ensure the dub? 
All right, this one was a bit of a trick question since you guys couldn't see that Booga had bouncers. Sometimes you're just gonna have to think outside the box as the bouncer play negates any fall damage that Booga would have taken trying to scale down. Additionally, his opponent also didn't think that Booga's quick thinking bouncer play was even a possibility. Absolutely mad plays from Booga to not crack under pressure and rack up some big points in the solo cash cup. And that's what a good VOD review does to you guys. You see, Booga did make a really nice play at the end there, but think about everything before that. What Booga did wasn't all too nutty at all, he just made really good decisions that kept adding up. Eventually, what do you know, he's on height inside of the top 5 and ready to lock it up. I think it's time to give some screen time to another pro player for a bit. Sorry, Booga, you know we love you. Let's shift gears to phase dubs, playing trio scrims with Bizzle and, oh, hey, Booga, long time no see, buddy. Anyways, this endgame scenario is shaping up to be a great game for the trio, as they have high ground going into second moving zone. But it isn't always that easy, and some crucial mistakes will end up costing the trio many points in the process. Let's break it down and see what decisions you guys would make. First off, Bizzle comes to dubs that he has a slurp juice for him. I have um, 200 brick. You guys play, you guys play high, I'm dropping, I'm staying in front. Okay. Dubs, you stay ultra right, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Off shield in that metal dude down south. We don't down. have that much match. I only Here, have 200. Dubs, I got a slurp for you, slurp for you. I have that, sorry. Slurp on me. Drop. Great, but what should Dubs drop to drink it? Let's take a look at his inventory and see what he can afford losing. All right, let's see what Dubs chooses. Unfortunately, Dubs drops his AR, and even more unfortunately, he gets RPG'd down as he goes to drink the slurp. Of course, this is unlikely that Dubs will get RPG'd the moment he drops his AR, but it's an unnecessary risk that he doesn't need to take. If you guys said the Storm Scout Sniper, now vaulted of course, or bandages, you'd be correct. He doesn't need either of these items nearly as much as his essential pump, AR, and minis combo. It's obviously a small point in the grand scheme of things, but what is VOD review if we can't learn from even our smaller mistakes? Right after this misplay, Bizzle gets knocked. Should Dub stick to the res on Bizzle here? Those of you who said no, it's time to give yourselves a pat on the back. Dubs obviously has no time to stick a 10 second revive, even if he has that slurp ticking. Bizzle will simply get knocked in zone again after he is revived. Instead, Dubs chalks up the loss and continues his pillage with a man down. Another problem arises though, as Dubs and Booga continue to be attacked by relentless RPG spam. Obviously, the duo is going to have to make some sort of play, but you guys think that Dubs should try finding more connection pieces to not get knocked down or just follow Booga? Well, let's take a look. Dubs has the right idea and tries to find more connections, which by the way is usually the correct play. The only thing he fails to account for is that he's out of mats. Yeah, that's pretty important if you ask me. Instead, he goes tumbling down the terrace and ultimately dies of fall damage. Ah, the classic myth play. Like I said, typically this is actually the right play, but since Dubs doesn't have mats and he failed to check his mat count regularly before taking the leap of faith, he ends up falling flat in his face. Bruh. Only in this situation would following Booga be the optimal play. Regardless, this misplay ends up costing the trio as Booga can't clutch up and they walk away with a mediocre 5th place finish. A good effort, but cleaning up these relatively basic mistakes could have sent them much further. To conclude, Booga is obviously a beast and Dubs is terrible. Haha, <laughs> just kidding of course. Seriously, your main takeaway from this video is that when you do VOD review, breaking down every crossroad into an active decision and really deciphering why a pro player made a decision can give you some of the best insight ever. We went over a few scenarios, one successful endgame, and epic fail. It's worth noting that if you do decide to pull out all the stops and actually VOD review, don't always watch the pop-off replays because sometimes watching the fails is what will really help you fix your mistakes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, why not go down and leave a big ol' like? You know the drill everyone, hit that subscribe button to get even more content just like this in your inbox. Also, since this video is a newer concept for the channel, you should go to the comments and tell us your favorite part. We want this series to help you guys out the most, but to do that, we also need your help. Other than that, I'm your host Dan, you can follow me on all social channels at, at Daniel Ammerman, and I'll see you guys in the next one.